following question is a related rate question about an water rising inside a conical tank. Conical tank with vertex down, so an inverted cone, is 5 meters across at the top and 6 meters deep. If water flows into the tank at a rate of 3 cubic meters per minute, how fast is the water level rising in the tank when the water is 4 meters deep? And we're given the volume of a cone here. See if we can start by sketching a cone 5 meters across and inverted. So there's our cone. And we'll fill it in with the information we know. So it's 5 meters across at the top, so the distance from here to here, or the diameter, is 5 meters. 6 meters deep, so from here to here, 6 meters. And water flows into the tank, so we have water going in at a rate of 3 cubic meters per minute. All right. So, we need to know how fast is the water level rising when the water is 4 meters deep. So, let's summarize what we're given. We know the change in volume as a function of time is 3. I'm going to disregard the units here just to save ourselves some space. Um, so that's 3 cubic meters per minute. We're looking for, let's just separate these, the change in height. How fast is the water level rising? So we're looking for the change in height, function of time, when h equals 4 when the height is 4. Let's see if we can stick the meters there. 4 meters. Should put in the units, I guess. There we go. 3 cubic meters per minute. Okay. So, rate of change of volume with respect to time, rate of change of height with respect to time is what we're looking for, and we know a height. We're giving an equation, so we'll look at that equation. The volume is 1 third pi r squared times h. To solve this question, we need to relate the volume to the height, which is good. We have an equation that does that, however, we have r here. Now, if r is constant, it doesn't matter, we can just leave it treated as a constant. However, we should notice here, as the height changes, the radius of the cone also changes. Okay. In order to remove the r then, because it is going to change, we need to use the property of similar triangles. If we look at our cone and we draw a line up the middle here, we can see that a cone can really give us two similar triangles. Okay? We know the corresponding parts of similar triangles are um, have ratios that correspond. So we can divide the length of this side by this one it has to correspond to this divided by the whole length. In other words, at any point on a cone, the radius over the height is constant. We know the radius at the top is 2.5, and the height is 6. This will allow us to solve for r which means 2.5 h over 6. Now this property, which comes from similar triangles, is true of any inverted cone. This is always going to be true. So we can replace r now, and we end up with the following. 1 third pi, well maybe we'll put the pi on top. r is going to be 2.5 h over 6, all squared, times h. Now, we can simplify that, square 
this term and we end up with the volume equaling 25 pi over four thirty two. Okay, so that's the simplified form of this. Now we can differentiate. Oh, we forgot our h cubed. Because now the volume is related to one variable with changes with respect to time, the height. So the derivative with respect to time, dv by dt, is equal to 3 comes down, so 75 pi over 432 h squared times dh by dt. Now we know h, so this is going to be 4. We know dv dt, it's just a matter of multiplying here and dividing by 3. So we'll put in the 3 here, we're going to put in 4 here, which becomes 16 which when we cancel here becomes 25 pi over 9 times dh dt. That's a little bit of algebra and simplification that I've skipped there to save space. And finally, we divide 3 by this and we finish with 27 over 25 pi meters per minute and that is dh by gt.